Come to question 14 of the addendum. Question 14 says, when Rutherford had a stream of alpha particles, hit a gold foil, most of the particles did what? So this was also a very famous experiment by, by Ernest Rutherford in 1911. This was around the same time period when we were trying to understand the nature of the atom. One of the, uh, the two opposing theories of the nature of the atom was that either the atom was just made up of uh, positive negative charges distributed randomly. So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, you know. So this was kind of like a, um, a pudding model of the atom where they were distributed randomly with no um, particular location, okay. The other model of the atom was that possibly the positive was um, <coughs> positive was at the nucleus of the atom at the center, and then the negatives were uh, and the negative charges were distributed all around. So what Rutherford did this was uh, several years before the development of the Bohr model of the atom. The Bohr model of the atom was developed in 1913. The Ernest Rutherford experiment. Ernest Rutherford was uh, done in 1911. So what he did was he shot uh, alpha particles. As we will see later on when we talk about radioactivity, alpha particles are uh, is one form of radioactive decay. And the alpha particle is basically a fancy word for the nucleus of the helium atom. So we write an alpha particle like this. H E 2 4 so basically the only thing is missing is the electrons so the alpha particle is the nucleus of the helium atom it has two protons and two neutrons in there and we can obtain that from radioactive decay of certain uh, elements radioactive elements right so basically he took these alpha particles which have positive charge he shot them through a gold foil okay so just imagine as if Imagine as if these alpha particles that are positively charged are being shot through, and then here is a gold foil, okay? And we wanted to see what's going to happen. Are most of them going to bounce back? Are most of them going to go through? Or are they going to scatter randomly, okay? Just randomly in all 360 directions. If they had scattered randomly, more or less completely in 360 degrees, what would that have meant if that was the case? It would have meant that the pudding model of the atom was true, right? The positive charges were everywhere. The minus charges were everywhere. So every time the helium atom uh, went, um, it bounced, it bounced, it bounced. Sometimes it hit it and it bounced back. Sometimes it hit nothing and it went straight through. So depending on basically where it landed or as it's on its path through the atom, it would have had a random scattering angle. What ended up happening, however, was that most of the um, helium nuclei, the alpha particles, most of them went through. About one in 8,000 only bounced back, right? So out of 8,000 uh, particles of uh, alpha, 7,999 went through and one bounced straight back. Well, what does that mean? If, if the majority okay, went through, well, it means that the nature of the atom is such that there is so much empty space it's not distributed randomly the positive charges is distributed at the center and the negative charges have certain orbits at that point in time the concept of the orbit hadn't really developed yet but at least the gold foil experiment showed us that there was a lot of empty space okay so when the helium nucleus came, if it was headed straight towards the center, what would happen? Well, since the alpha particle is positive, 
and you go and you hit exactly positive, you bounce straight back, right? You bounce straight back. One in 8,000 bounced back, okay? Most of the other ones, all of the other ones went straight through, okay? <coughs> they didn't even scatter at a certain weird angle. Most of them just went through. Of course, eventually this led to the development of the Bohr model of the atom and our modern understanding of the um, atomic structure, okay? Thank you very much.